Good evening. Welcome to today's edition of GFA News. My name is Shaban Mohammed. Coming up in today's edition, Ghana Fusa team played their first game against Zambia. GFA President Kerti Yesukuku chose support behind all regional games. Newly appointed Cloud Licensing Manager SMMs give details on his role and expectations. More details on the Ghana Premier League, the Assets Bank Division 1 League, and the Mortar Guinness Women's Premier League. To my first story, Ghana national futsal team played its first game against Zambia in the 2024 Futsal Cup of Nations. The last time Ghana participated in the Futsal Cup of Nations was in the year 1996 when the team managed second place in the competition. The coach of the team, Philip Boache, has stated that even with the defeat, the team would bounce back. I think uh, the boys played a very good game, but we lost the concentration and the Zambia's score. We have already told them we want to qualify to the World Cup and we can assure them we will qualify to the World Cup. Actually, we have lost our first game and this is not putting us down. We still have more hope and we are going to make it to the finals and also to World Cup. We are taking every match, uh, we are approaching this game match after match. So we will assure them the qualification for the World Cup. Then after qualifying, we'll fight for the trophy. President of the Ghana Football Association, Ket Simon Edwin Okriku, has promised to stand behind former Black Stars captain Asamoah Jan ahead of all regional games. The idea of the all regional games fits into two key areas in our current football ecosystem. Fixing the fundamentals and catching the talent young. Athletes, sportsmen need clean and organized platforms which is a key part of fixing the fundamentals to show what they can do. To show they are God-given talents. So the Baby Jets and the team here are helping the country in fixing the fundamentals. They are also offering us the opportunity for young talents who would not normally be found from the woods of Ghana, the opportunity to be found via this platform called the All Regional Games. Baby Jet, thank you. The Football Association will stand with you. You are a proud son of our industry. We will give this product and this project all the support that you do deserve, especially with our ever pleasant Cardem Young referees, who should be part of this. Beyond this, we will give you, like I said, all the technical needs that this particular project will need. Country Ghana will have to be supportive of this amazing idea and project. It should be our project. We should not leave it into the hands of only these few and the backroom staff who have been working so hard in ensuring that we are here today to witness this press engagement. When we talk about the all regional games, I urge every Ghanaian to support it. We are not here to come do one edition and then the following year you will hear of us again. I'm sure you have kids who are coming up. We are here to discover talents, not only football. We are also here people who cannot make it. We are here to support them, to give them scholarships and everything, to make sure without sports, they can even continue and better their education and become somebody 
for Ghana. The time is now because it's been my dream. Although I'm a football player, ex-football player, who has done a lot in football, but I'm thinking about Ghana. I'm not thinking about only football. And obviously, I thank my colleagues for their support. All the corporate organizations who want to sponsor, make sure you come on. Let's sponsor this event to make Ghana a great one. The much anticipated competition will feature nine disciplines, including football, volleyball, table tennis, arm wrestling, athletic, boxing, tennis, basketball, and e-sports. Head of competitions of the Ghana Football Association, Julius Ben Emuna, has assured competitiveness in the remaining games across the leagues, with nine matches to end the Ghana Premier League, six to finish the Malta Guineas Women's Premier League, and nine games to end the Access Bank Division 1 League. The Ghana Premier League is our number one product, it's our topmost product uh, in terms of the football pyramid. And uh, for the past few seasons, we've had very successful Premier League in terms of uh, ending without hitches and issues. For my day 25 going, because that's 10 matches to the end of the season. So you expect that there will be a higher competition. And thankfully, as competitive as our league is, as you all know, you cannot really pinpoint, even as it stands now, who is going to win the league or who is going to relegation. It's still an open league. So teams go into all the matches as a cup final. For our women, of course, uh, very important to this FA because uh, we believe that uh, increasing participation and attraction to our women's game is the future of football. When the women's game is so developed, it attracts a lot of women's interest in the game. And we all know what women's interest in the game will do to the future of football. It means that there will be increased participation. We'll make sure that the business end of our competitions, we end it in a grand style. There are, there are plans in place already to decide on the venue for the, the final playoff, you know, because of, uh, as you mentioned, we have the, the northern and the southern zone. So at the end of the season, we'll play the pl final playoff as well. Uh, the FA, MTN FA Cup, before I even touch on Division 1 League, is also in the semi final stage, bar one outstanding match in the quarter final. We have plans in place from the committee's perspective to get a venue uh, for the semi final, which is a mini tournament. And of course, for the final as well. Same for the women FA Cup as well. For Division One League, of course, I think that is one of the most exciting products uh, in, in football in Africa. If you want to really see young, talented, and exciting footballers in the Division One League, the various zones are highly competitive. As I speak to you right now, also from Zone One to Zone Two to Zone Three, there is no clear cut who is going to win the zone or who is going to relegation. It tells you how competitive our leagues have become. Uh, we 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 create an atmosphere around the games as it gets to the end of, of the season. So uh, we are sure, we are hopeful with the plans we put in place, with the support from all other departments, with the support of all other stakeholders. At this opportunity, I also, also plead with all our stakeholders, the National Sports Authority, the Ghana Police Service, the Ghana Medical Association, all the various hospitals who are assisting our clubs to come to our aid when we call upon them because this is the business end of our league. We need their support, we need their assistance so that we have uh, a wonderful end to our season. He also added that some measures have been put in place to ensure smooth running of the remaining games in the leagues. Uh, of course, obviously, we all appreciate there are few cankers that come with uh, organization of uh, the Premier League. Key among them is hooliganism, which I've always maintained that we've had a reduced numbers of cases in terms of incidents and sports of uh, hooliganism and then misconduct in our league, all because of measures that have been put in place. And thankfully, recently uh, we had a new safety and security committee and key among their role is to ensure that they put in place preventive measures that is going to ensure that uh, especially games that are, are tagged as high profile matches or games that we expect to have these issues are dealt with from a preventive perspective. So all those plans are in place, especially like you mentioned, uh, we uh, increased our monitoring, evaluation, and then preventing measures for my day 25 going. So the safety and security committee, like I did mention, led by uh, DCOP Lydia Donko, they are doing a very great job. Let me use this opportunity to thank her so much. Her intervention and her proactiveness is yielding results. So we'll continue with that. 
every week we are going to analyze the matches and uh, plan ahead from a security perspective, the necessary deployment that needs to be done. We are even exploring the possibility through the IGP to do crisscrossing policing where police from different districts or region will police certain matches. As we all appreciate that familiarity with police officers is one of the reasons why some supporters misbehave. We are also not, I mean, uh, leaving no stone on ten in terms of uh, putting corporates before courts, as you, you really know that those incidents that happened in Kumasi, they've gone, they've gone to courts, and then the case is being processed. And if found guilty, they are going to face the law. That is also going to send a strong warning to other hooligans in the game. It is a zero tolerance towards hooligans because they have no place in our football. Football is a game; it's a friendly game, and uh, we expect that no matter the results. We have to exhibit that Ghanaian friendship culture we all have. And so people who are hooligans, we want to send a strong warning to them that we are sorry. The Ghana Football Association is strongly against hooligans. So if you are a hooligan, uh, you can find a different place to attend, not our football venues. The Ghana Football Association organized a workshop for the regional referees managers on the 12th April 2024 to enhance their capacity in improving the games across all regions. Speaking to the National Referees Manager, Alex Kote, he stated that the workshop will have an impact on all regions as the managers of all regional referees were present for the workshop. So these are participants from the 10 regional football associations. Um, they are, they are re representing the head of referees in, 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 the, in the RFAs. Um, the essence of this meeting was to bring them together um, and then also talk to them about the vision of the FA, what, what we want to do specifically, uh, making reference to the Catch Them Young referees, who are the, the baby of, of, of the FA. We are looking at the various pathways that we want to bring these people up to see how best we can enhance develop these talents and get them to the top. It was very necessary that we bring them together, share the vision with them, so that when they go back, they will also try to carry on with the vision that the FA has. And so um, we brought them here this morning and the president had to come and talk to them, share the vision of the FA with them. We, we, we talked about a lot of things we are even looking at a career guidance for them. We want to see how best we can help these boys to, to, to develop and to grow. Um, the president also informed them that coming next season, we want to have the first five uh, professional referees in Ghana, and it's going to start with the Catch Them Young referees as well. We talked about the recruitment policies um, the training policies, the developmental policies, career guidance, and, and, and all that. Above all, we want to make sure that this time, before, before any head of referee uh, propose uh, a referee to the national, they must come with a supporting data so that it is not just going to be, oh, this, this referee is my friend, is my relative, is my dad, is my dad, is my dad. But any referee who is proposed or who is recommended to the higher uh, level, it must come with a data. We have told them about the recruitment policies, which we want to ensure that it is, it is, it is carried on. We have talked to them about the, thresh, the threshold or the cut-off uh, point of referees. We have also told them that um, apart from the Catch Them Young, there are other talented Ref people who would come into refereeing, and we want to make sure that we engage all of them. We also told them about the licensing procedures, where now every referee in the region would, would have to be licensed by the FA. And we also asked them that in everything that they do, honesty and integrity must be their, their, their whole mob back. Volta Regional Referees Manager Richard Kumezu has disclosed that the workshop will help his region. Uh, a lot is dependent from the region because we are supposed to bring the referees from the grassroots. And if we have the best structure at the regional level, 
it means that Ghana will be seeing the best referees in the future. The idea or the vision of the FA and then the referees national manager is that we should be able to get the young referees that will represent Ghana in the near future. We'll be getting good referees in the FIFA tournaments, World Cups, to talk about CAF programs and all those things. So that is exactly what they've taken us through and the responsibility has now come to we, the RFA referees managers, to do a lot. And then we are also expected to go back, get people around the referees committee that we have at the various uh, regions to also be up and doing. At the end, we will all get the best out of a refereeing association that we need in the RFA. There were certain things that were not really known, but with this meeting, we have been put on the right path. And therefore, we've also been challenged as uh, leaders to come up with innovations in addition to what we have learned today. And therefore, so I can confidently say that the meeting we've had today is going to impact positively when we get back to our regions and then we'll get the best out of referees. And there are certain things that those referees already on the distance. One most important thing is that the loss of the game is fundamental. And therefore, all referees must know the loss of the game. And that is very, very cogent. The newly appointed club licensing manager, Esme Mens, give details on his new role and expectations. We look at so many things in terms of uh, youth development, budgeting. Uh, there are so many requirements clubs must meet uh, to be able to be issued uh, licenses before they can uh, participate in, in our local uh, leagues. We can only improve. That, that, that should be the main aim of our, our department. In fact, with any department, you improve on uh, what is already there. So because whatever has been done before is not bad. We just need to improve. We just need to work on it and improve on it and be a little bit tough on certain things. Because when we look at uh, our training pitches and we look at uh, the youth development, which is the main aim of our football, uh, clubs don't usually pay attention to uh, our youth football development. So we'll look at that thoroughly and make sure things are done right. At the, at, the, at the juvenile level. Things will change gradually. It won't be uh, a one day something, no. It will be gradual. It's a process. So we'll, we'll follow through with the process and make sure things are done the right way. Esme Mens is a former player of Real Sportive and Accra Heart of Folk, where he managed to win one Ghana Premier League trophy with the club. The fixtures of the Mortar Guineas Women's Premier League. On March Day 13, Prisons Ladies will welcome Supreme Ladies at the Sunyano Coronation Park. Fosu Royal Ladies and Temali Super Ladies will battle at the Oheni Ameyao Park. Ashtown Ladies face off and Pemdakuma Ladies at the Bantama Astrotech. Northern Ladies and Pelpia Ladies will face at the Nubisco Park. And again, Dreams Ladies versus Kumasi Sports Academy at the Bantama Astro Tape on Sunday. These are the Northern Zone fixtures. With the Southern Zone fixtures, Isiam Sokri will battle Army Ladies at the Inyan Abasa Astro Tape. Azakes Ladies will face Berry Ladies at the Jendi Park, where Sea Lions will also welcome soccer intellectuals at the Indum Sports Complex. Faith Ladies will face off Jonina Ladies at the Carl Randolph Astro on Sunday, which will be live on Max TV. Moving on to the Ghana Premier League, where Nations FC and FC Samates are battling for supremacy. Hard to folk at the Accra Sports Stadium welcome Karela United on Saturday at 6 p.m. At the Theatre of Dreams, Dreams Football Club will face Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Mediama Sporting Club at the Akon Park will welcome Legon Cities, whilst Bechem United at the Nana Fusuji Award Park will battle Real Tamale United. At the Professor Nana Amwa Kromansa Park, Nsotraman FC will face Accra Great Olympics. Nations FC will also battle Bofa Kwatano at the Dr. Kwame Che Sports Complex. Mediana FC Face off Heart of Lions at the Nana Ajimam Bibi Park. FC Summertex League leaders would also welcome Bukun Chelsea at the Century Sports Arena. 
Accra Lions at Accra Sports Stadium on Monday will face Bedouin Gold Stars and will live on Star Times at the Bar Channel 247. Moving on to the Assets Bank Division 1 League, we start with Zone 1A and B. And with Zone 1A, on Saturday, Northern City will battle Tembale City. Victory Club Warriors will face Mana FC. Techiman Heroes will battle Wa Power FC. Wa Sunta will battle Steadfast FC. In Zone 1B, Young Apostles will face DBB United. Bafo Soccer Academy. Techiman Liberty Youth BA United versus Mighty Royals. Moving on to Zone 2, Asakem will battle Swedo All Blacks in Zima Kotoko who face Mysterious Wars, Basake Holy Stars versus Future Stars, Park Academy, Young Red Bull, Sefi All Stars versus New ABBC United, Elimina Sharks battle Sky FC, King Faisal versus Rose Park, Venomous Vipers versus Soccer Intellectuals. Moving on to Zone 3 of the Assets Bank Division 1. A Trump Divisa will face FC Nanya. Vision FC will battle Accra Athletic. Kotoku Royals still believe Uncle T versus Golden Kicks. Kings Palace versus Kofuja Simpifi. Akachi All Stars versus Home Stars. Hoho United versus Nagod. Susugubi SC will face Okou United. So these are the fixtures for the Mortal Guinness Women's Premier League, the Assets Bank Division Wali, and the Ghana Premier League. This is Moose Corner. My name is Shaban Mohammed. Today, our focus will be on the Ghana Premier League, where we'll get to preview the Heart to Folk versus Karela United fixture at Accra Sports Stadium, and also on Sunday, Dreams FC Kumasi Asante Kotoko match. Today, our focus will be on the Ghana Premier League. We'll preview the fixtures. Hard to folk at home against Karela United. It has always been difficult for hard to folk to beat Karela United at Accra Sports Stadium. Records clearly show that anytime Karela comes to Accra, they manage to pick a point. And then on Sunday, Dreams FC at home, Theater of Dreams, will battle Kumasa Santi Kotoko. Send your predictions ahead of the match day 26 fixtures on Saturday. How to fool Karela United, Kumasi Asante Kotoko will be traveling to the theater of dreams to face Dreams FC on Monday, Accra Lions versus Blue Stars. What are your predictions for the game? Thank you for joining us for today's edition of the GFA News. My name is Shaban Mohammed. You can follow the Ghana Football Association on Facebook and also on YouTube for more updates on GFA News.